Good evening and thanks for joining us here at 5 today. Today marks three weeks since three-year-old Elijah Vu was reported missing from a Two Rivers apartment. Law enforcement continued to work on the case as dozens of volunteers are putting in time searching the rural and rugged parts of the area, looking for anything that could help lead investigators to this little boy. Vu's mother, Katrina Bauer, and her boyfriend, Jesse Vang, who is caring for Elijah when he went missing, are both in jail now facing child neglect charges. In this Fox 11 follow-up, Emily Matesic explains how volunteers are helping. The volunteer search for Elijah Vu turned to Brown County three weeks after he was originally reported missing. We are just searching for anything that could be relevant to the case, um, uh, searching for socks, shoes, uh, anything that could have possibly been dubbed. Searchers spent the morning at Weequiock Falls before turning their attention to the trails near Bay Beach Wildlife Sanctuary. They're meticulously searching for anything that looks out of the ordinary, marking areas they've walked through, trying to stay hopeful but also realistic about the situation. It's a needle in, a hay in the haystack, right? Now you have to kind of think, if, if I was this person and I'm in a panic and carrying something, where would I go, what, what could I do, you know? And, and it's really hard to put yourself, and you don't want to put yourself into those shoes. You don't want to start thinking like that. But, you know, you have to think, where could this person have, have put this little boy? While law enforcement says they continue to follow up on leads, searchers aren't willing to give up either. Put yourself in the shoes of the, the grandparents and the aunts and uncles and all the rest of the family members and think, wouldn't you want everybody to try to help you if you were the one looking for your grandchild? And that's why Jackie Damiano, who works for Bell & Health, came up with the idea of collecting items that can help in the search. I have been helping the family with handing out posters to some of the companies, and there were actually some companies who had resisted having this child's poster posted. Damiano says Bell & was on board by sharing the wish list. It's looking to collect things like small flashlights and batteries, compasses, whistles, bandages, single-use first aid ointment and hand sanitizer, as well as vinyl gloves. This leads to the way for us to give back, to try to bring him home, even if we can't dedicate the hours that other searchers are able to. The searches for Elijah Vu continue all week in different Northeast Wisconsin communities. And donations for search items will be collected at Bellin's Two Rivers and Manitowoc locations until March 25th. In Brown County, Emily Matesic, Fox 11 News. As the search for Elijah continues, police remind everyone that no tip or bit of information is too small to pass along. Anyone who may have seen Elijah or knows where he is is urged to call the number on your screen. That is 844-267-6648. And a prayer vigil for Elijah is scheduled for later this weekend. A candlelight vigil and balloon release is planned for Saturday night in Two Rivers. It's being held at Walsh Field at 6.30. I live in Two Rivers. I, I'm five blocks, about five blocks actually, from where he was last seen. Um, and I work for Bellin full time. And... We want, my husband and I wanted to do something to help the family because it's so heartbreaking just to hearing this little boy, what he was, what he had gone through so young. Um, but we work five days a week and I'm actually not, I guess I'm, I'm not a veteran really with Bellin yet. Like I've only been here for a couple of years. So I, I had wanted to do something, but I was kind of hemming and hawing, kind of nervous. Like how do, how do I ask this, this great corporation? <laughs> like, how do I proceed here? Um, and I'd reached out to the family and they had said, you know, we, we are looking for these items. And so Bellin was so amazing. All the people here just immediately, as soon as they heard the need that this family had, they stepped up and, you know, they were like, let us help. And so this is kind of how we got here to where 
Bellin really decided to jump in and help this family. And I just hope that this is, this is going to help bring them home and put an end to this, this awful story for this child. I'd say last week was probably when I first actually decided to, to suck it up. That's for Elijah and just kind of put it out there like, Hey, um, I have been helping the family with handing out posters to some of the companies. And there were actually some companies who had resisted having this child's poster posted. And so then I got the courage to, to step up and <laughs> say, Hey, can we, can we do something? And it just, kind of grew. Well, so I did get um, a message from a, a team of co-workers in the Oconto area. They have already mentioned that they will be sending us a box of whistles. Um, it sounds like they're going to look into sending uh, first aid kits. Um, and I feel like um, some more will be coming in now that this actually just got released to our company today. So I'm expecting a lot more now to be pouring in. And I think I just posted on Facebook this drive yesterday. Actually, I just spoke with Linda yesterday. I, I had tried to be involved with help in searching when I can. Um, so I'd reached out to her yesterday and asked her, you know, if she had more specific items she would like to add. And I said, really? This is for this is for your volunteers and for the family. Anything that we can do, just let us know what you need. Um, so she's, I think she's going to be compiling a list for us to go ahead and update. Well, compasses, I it's Wisconsin, right? Lots of rural areas, lots of big rural areas. So no one wants to get lost, especially when you're not familiar with the area. Um, whistles, I'm. I'm guessing if they find something, because I know none of the searchers are going by themselves. So whistles that they find anything out there. Um, and the first aid kits, I, again, it's rural Wisconsin. We're constantly <laughs> getting beat up by, by the wetlands and <laughs> forests and everything else. So I'm guessing that that's what that stuff is for. I keep thinking about how I I feel like individually, um, almost a sense of responsibility, like he was in our community and I, I feel like he was let down. And this, this leads to the way for us to give back to try to bring him home, even if we can't dedicate the hours that other searchers are able to. It's, this just hits so close to home. And I'm just thankful that we're able to do something to help. So that helps. My husband and I work in two different counties. I work in Sturgeon Bay, and I was working in Sturgeon Bay the day that he went missing. And my husband works in Sheboygan County. And, you know, the, the Amber Alert was kind of limited as to where it all got sent out to. And we didn't hear about it until kind of on our way home. And we have a 21-month-old. So just hearing that and thinking about how cold Wisconsin is, it just makes you want to do something and then all these stories come out about how he's been treated and stuff and it's like it, we just we just need to do better for our kids so hopefully that's what this, this kind of helps with i think just just keeping this going and getting him i know he's got so much attention right now but i also know that the searches cost money they're really hard to sustain. So anything that anyone can do to help is is enough. You don't have to feel like you're not 
helping by not being part of the active searches, just helping with like helping with a small donation towards these searches or helping a box of band-aids, anything like that. It's it, any of it just means so much. And I just hope we can keep his story alive until he comes home.